Well, I think when you push it to the, probe it to the bottom line, what you're finding here is not science but magic. You talked about it earlier, about the idea of everything coming out of nothing. If there's any axiom that controls scientific inquiry, it's the axiom ex nihilo nihil fit. Out of nothing, nothing comes. Now, we would say not only out of nothing does nothing come, but out of nothing, nothing could possibly mm. come because nothing does not have the power to produce something. And I wrote a book a few years ago called Not a Chance and explored the way that word, chance, mm -hmm. is being bandied about in a sort of careless and irresponsible way where people begin to talk about chance as if it were some force or power that can make things happen. Mm -hmm. Now the word's a perfectly legitimate word to describe mathematical possibilities or uh, 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 quotients, uh, probability quotients. But I had a discussion with the fellow who was teaching at the graduate school at Harvard in the philosophy of science, and I asked him how the universe came into being. He said, uh, by chance. And I said, what, what do you mean? It doesn't mean anything. And, and, and I, I pick, anything. picked up a half a dollar and I flipped it in the air, and I said, what are the chances this is going to come up, heads or tails? He said, well, it's 100% that will come up one of them, but 50% for each. And, mm -hmm. and okay, I said, now, now that I've flipped the coin, I want to ask you, how much power did chance exert upon this coin toss? If we knew, for example, the exact density of the air, where we started, you know, whether heads up or tails up, the exact amount of pressure that was uh, placed upon the coin, how many revolutions it made, would we be able to predict with a greater than 50 50 cents uh, chance where it would end up? He said, Of course. I said, Because chance didn't influence. And I said, you know why? And he said, why? I said, because chance has no power because it has no being. It's nothing. Well, and that's what they come back to. Nothing creating Ch something. Yeah, Ch chance, chance means something if you don't have any better explanation. <laughs> but, but, uh, a, but to say we think it's chance that something came out of nothing, that means nothing. That means nothing. It's like David saying, Hume said that the word chance is used as a magic word for ignorance. When you well don't put. know what, some, what causes something, you say, well, it, it happened by chance. It, 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 that doesn't explain anything. Well, but the, the, the terrifying part of this, RC, if I may call you that, sure. is, that, is that this kind of ignorance, this kind of arrogant ignorance, has such incredible power on college and university campuses. And if you even question it, they call you a knuckle-dragging creationist as if it were somehow more likely that, there, that, these, that, that something came out of nothing than that there was a divine designer. That, that's more likely. I mean, anything, anything rather than admit to a designer, anything rather than admit to a divine being exactly. controlling the that's universe. That's where the biases, I, I spoke on this point at Yale to, with the faculty several years ago when I, when I talked about the impossibility of something's coming out of nothing. And the, the professors were wild, but they said they had never heard of this kind of thing. And I said, well, wait a minute. You go back to the Enlightenment, and the reason they said that the God hypothesis is no longer necessary is because, like the French encyclopedia said, now we know that the universe came into being and life came into being as a result of spontaneous generation. Now, what's that? Yeah, That's wh just poof, out of nothing, yes. it comes. When they launched the Hubble telescope, I'm listening to the radio, I'm driving down the highway, this is no kidding, man. And a very famous astrophysicist, I won't mention his name to protect the guilty, he's on the radio and he said, 16 to 18 billion years ago, the universe exploded into being. I almost wrecked my car. Yeah. I said, what do you mean into being? What was it before? Non-being, means it was nothing. Now here's another one. Professor uh, out in the West Coast, Nobel Prize winner, writes an article last few years saying, we can no longer believe in the paradigm of spontaneous generation. You can't get something out of nothing spontaneous. He said, we have to change our model, listen to this, to gradual spontaneous. <laughs> I said, these people mm. g get away with this kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, if I talked like that as a theologian or as a philosopher, I'd be laughed to scorn. It's well, magic. Well, but this is kind of, you, you've, you've put your finger on something very scary, which is that there are very few places where more, more nonsense is spoken than in universities. I mean, universities, which are supposed to be the residual fortress of knowledge and sense, 
are the residual fortress of nonsense. And, and in this particular case, yes. And by the way, I, I don't think our movie, or any of us connect with the movie, says that Darwin was a fool. He was obviously an extraordinary, well, unbelievable genius. They've gone way genius, beyond him. Way beyond, and, and way beyond him. And you know, in one particular way they've gone beyond him, which is very troublesome, he wasn't positive of his hypothesis. He wrote that it was a hypothesis. He thought it was proved, but he wasn't sure. And he said he wanted people to continue to debate this and hope for whatever result they wished for as long as man could debate. He did not want to close the subject ever. And he said that for people to think that they could know this to a certainty was like expecting a dog to understand Newton's physics. And uh, I have a very, very smart dog, but I don't expect her to understand Newton's physics. But why would this, this man, who really genuinely did believe in ongoing inquiry, and that was how he got his uh, work done, why would he ever take, be, be taken as the namesake by these evil, I shouldn't say evil, these confused people who want to shut down inquiry. I mean, he was the avatar of open inquiry, and he's being used as the avatar of the closed mind, to go back to your uh, beginning simile. It's amazing to me that uh, there has to be a reason. Because these they're, people they're are threatened terrible. threatened by it for some They're reason. threatened by it. I mean, imagine if you were a high commissar in Czechoslovakia, and uh, you were living the good life as a high party commissar, and someone came along and said, communism doesn't work. It's a, a, a sin against, against humanity. It's not economically productive. It doesn't give rise to human dignity. There's nothing good about it. You wouldn't want to hear that, because if communism goes, your job goes poof. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's sort of like that in the academic world. Plus people, you know, I hate to say this, and I, I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail about this, but people go into academic life in large measure because they're frightened people. They want a kind of sanctuary. and. Uh, uh, so when they're when they're attacked or questioned even, they react very very strongly. They're they're scared people, and they're, they're really scared of intelligent design, because if intelligent design is true, and if they are, if in fact Darwinism is only goes so far and only covers a small amount of the territory, all kinds of threats to their power and status arise. You know, the but great not only that what that they ought to be afraid of are the implications of their own thinking, because again. If we are cosmic accidents, if we're grown-up germs that have emerged fortuitously from the slime, where our origin was nothingness and our destiny is nothingness, how could we possibly have any significance in between? What you're seeing here is the death blow to human dignity. Well, and Darwinism is the death blow to human yeah, dignity. And the point is, is that, that you are insignificant. Well, Darwin said at a certain point in his life, I'm afraid now I've killed God. And uh, that I don't think he has, not for, there's still the great majority of Americans are believers, but the, uh, yeah, if we're just accidents from a dust puddle, dust storm, or from a mud puddle, what does it matter if we kill each other? What, 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 what no difference is it whether, whether white germs or black germs sit on the back of the bus? Right. Who cares if you gas eight million Jewish germs? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Because we, we don't matter. Right. And that's why I say, if I were a scientist convinced of the theses of macroevolution, and I were persuaded of that, I would have to accept it with tears. And I, and I would say, why would I even bother to get up tomorrow morning? Right, right, right. Except, except to enjoy yourself, get high, have yeah. sex, and eat as much as you could, because, there, because there's no significance otherwise. And of right. course, there's no hope of any kind of eternity. Now, the, the, the Darwinists would just say, well, that's sad, but that's the way it is. Well, of course, that's no what Nietzsche said. That's what Sartre said.